Matthew Falder, 29, once a promising academic, descended into extreme depravity, blackmailing and humiliating his many victims into performing ever-increasingly despicable acts on themselves and others. Hidden behind a veil of false dark web identities, he became notorious in extreme online circles, sharing vile content on hurt core websites and in return gaining exclusive access to illicit materials. He preyed on individuals regardless of age or gender, yet he never physically met his victims. His ruthless desire for control and his relentless cruelty have inflicted deep and irreversible damage, making this case one of the most harrowing and disturbing I have ever covered. I remember when Falder was arrested and I was shocked and disgusted by his crimes. It always stuck with me and the only reason I haven't covered this case already is because I assumed it was already well known. But as it turns out, I don't think it is. Falder is everyone's worst nightmare from the dark web. He's relentless and ruthless and his only goal is to take everything away from you. He wants you to be terrified and he wants you to feel like there's no way out. Be warned, this is a rough one. But before we dive in, I want to let you know about my second channel, Grim Tales. I'm sure that if you find this content fascinating, then you'll feel the same over there. A link to the channel is in the comments section and the description of this video. As ever, please drop this one a like and subscribe if you are new. Thank you. This video is created solely for educational and documentary purposes. It does not endorse or condone the criminal actions described within. Matthew Falder, born on October 24th, 1988, in Manchester, England, enjoyed a privileged upbringing in the tranquil town of Knutsford, Cheshire. His family's comfortable lifestyle was supported by his father, Stephen Fowler, who led the UK's largest independent paint manufacturer, HMG Paints. A standout student from a young age, Fowler attended the private King's School in Macclesfield before furthering his education at the prestigious Cambridge University. At Cambridge, his peers knew him as a confident, humorous individual with a magnetic personality, and he earned respect as a promising scientist, specializing in seismic oceanography. Falder's potential was evident as he embarked on a postdoctoral research career in geophysics at the University of Birmingham. His academic excellence was not unnoticed. One tutor even remarked on his significant international contributions to the field and said he was one of the best students that they had ever taught. Throughout his first year at Cambridge, Falder began a decade-long relationship with a woman who was the same age but shall not be named. Despite the outward normalcy of their relationship, beneath the surface, violence was brewing within Falder, totally unbeknownst to his girlfriend. It was at university that Falder's crimes began, and over time, they would escalate in severity. He started with covert surveillance of his female housemates, secretly installing cameras in the bathroom, as can be seen in this clip. He once confessed to a male housemate what he was doing, but when his disturbing admission was met with alarm, he brushed it off as just humor. This was the beginning of a contrasting outward demeanor and a hidden dark reality. 
his fascination with unauthorized filming intensified to the point where he used his 21st birthday as a way for further invasions of privacy. He arranged a bush trip for numerous friends from Cambridge to visit his parents' numerous homes. This was a big party. Fowler used this opportunity to capture unsuspecting women naked without their consent. Over time, Fowler's actions became more depraved. He devised a deceitful scheme to ensnare victims, adopting the guise of Liz, a fictitious female artist on Gumtree and Facebook. He targeted individuals, advertising babysitting or pet walking services, baiting them with offers of up to £4,000 for nude photographs under the pretense of needing them for therapeutic charcoal sketches. He told them, as Liz, that her therapist had told her that this would help her and that once she was done, she would destroy the photograph and nobody else would see it. Falder was preying on vulnerable people who were desperate for money and most of the people he would ensnare were young females. He chose Gumtree and Facebook for their ease of creating new profiles. Upon receiving the images, his true intentions surfaced. He was extremely computer savvy and was able to locate the victim's personal profile and then he would blackmail his victims, threatening to distribute the photos to their families, acquaintances, work and schools unless they complied with his increasingly degrading demands. Have you done that? No comment. Have you sent pictures of your blackmail victims to the parents? No comment. Of the victim? The grandparents? No comment. The workplace? No comment. The schools? No comment. Falder coerced his victims into posing in humiliating positions often holding signs bearing messages like, I am a sex slave. He escalated his demands to the point of forcing them to record themselves, engaging in acts of degradation, such as making them go to McDonald's or train station public toilets and film themselves licking the toilet seat or brushes or eating used sanitary products or even dog food. He made them pose with photos of Hitler and make them sing extremely offensive songs, all for the purpose of future manipulation. The victims were never meant to comply with him. One young female sent him over 200 images, but it was never enough and there was never an end unless they did it themselves. The impact of his actions was so severe and far-reaching as he widely distributed his content on websites for people with sinister interests like his, leaving lasting scars on the lives of the affected people. The website of which he uploaded the images to was called Hurt to the Core, which is on the dark web and known as the worst website in the world. It is an extreme website containing the worst kind of content you can imagine. Even before you sign up, the pre-registration disclaimer is too extreme for me to be able to read here. It is a place for the sickest individuals to share and push each other further into depravity. You get rewarded for uploads and how popular they prove to be and Falder was top ranked on this website. He took great pride and got a sense of power from being so popular on the sick site. He had his own series of images of which contained torture of the most vulnerable, which proved to be very popular. The content, I cannot stress enough, is as bad as it gets. And it's hard to believe that places like this really exist, but they do sickening. He uploaded images with text all about his victims. One of the victims who sent him over 200 images was threatened 
with those images being sent to her mother and school. The dialogue from the messaging between himself and the victim was screenshotted and uploaded to the website as the audience got a sick kick out of her anguish. Valda also posed as a teenage female in an online forum and was able to convince a young vulnerable female from Eastern Europe to be his girlfriend. In an online exchange with another abuser, he said of her, and quote, I'm thinking of just betraying her as harshly as I can to see how much I can mentally F her up. I think there is even a bit of a chance that she ends it all. Another victim was a young female in foster care who was told her disabled brother would be taken away from her if she did not keep sending degrading photos. Falda forced her to pose with a sign that said, I look after my disabled brother. Now I am being forced to strip. Harrowingly, he also managed to manipulate a young father into forcing himself on his son and filming it, to which Falda shared with his fellow sick friends. The images that he provided to you, have you shared them with anybody else? No comment. Have you distributed those images to um, any like-minded individuals on the forums we've discussed previously? No comment. Or with any other person? No comment. He also shared instructional videos on how to intimately abuse youths, as well as guidance on how to give youths sweets, which were soaked in urine or even more disturbing bodily fluids. In further posts, he wrote about arranging to meet a blackmailed victim for intimacy in a remote location and told how he would make the person tie themselves to a tree, lock the bindings and throw away the key to ensure a slow and painful death. Falder also suggested a twisted game in which a curling iron would be inserted into a woman's vagina and could only be turned off if they answered a question correctly. He also posted a video of a man repeatedly throwing a victim who couldn't swim into a pool with them submerged for several seconds each time and also spoke of fantasies of breaking victims' bones one by one until they slowly died. It is truly the worst of the worst. Falda prided himself on his notoriety as a blackmailer, frequently gloating to his victims about his supposed anonymity and elusiveness from the law, stating that he could never be caught. He used a network of encrypted email addresses and advanced Tor software, which gives anonymity online and hides your activity. It also facilitates access to the dark web. Additionally, he strategically utilized email accounts based in Russia, aware that such a move would create significant hurdles for the British authorities pursuing his case. He used usernames such as In The Garden, Evil Mind, 666 Devil, but in total he had 70 different online identities. And it's become apparent that obviously that's an email account that's current and you're using at this moment in time. Is that correct? No comment. Is there any other email accounts, Matthew, that you're using at the current time? No comment. If there are any more email accounts, what are the passwords? For no comment. In 2014, under the alias 666 Devil, Falder asked for suggestions from fellow Hurt to the Core users on methods to inflict torture on his daughter for what he called the week of suffering. In truth, Falder never had a daughter. These were in fact intended for another father that he was blackmailing. This disturbing questioning drew the attention of law enforcement and prompted an urgent worldwide investigation by various national crime agencies aimed at rescuing the girl in peril. 
The agencies involved were the Government Communications Headquarters, which is one of the three intelligence services in the UK, the US Department of Homeland Security, Europol, the Australian Federal Police, and the New Zealand and Israeli Police. This investigation was so complex that it lasted for four years. And this was four years in which Falder was still extorting his victims and forcing them to create content. During this time, four of his victims tried to end everything. Once the investigation was nearing completion, they had an address in Birmingham, England, and the name Falder. Before they arrested him, they had to observe him using the laptop, as can be seen here. They did this to prove that he was the man behind the screen, as he never met any of his victims in real life, which is actually amazing and infuriating when you consider what depraved acts he forced people to do. On June 21st, 2017, authorities detained Falder at his workplace. The arresting officers observed that he seemed stunned and at a loss for words, struggling to comprehend the unfolding situation. When they handcuffed him, Falder downplayed the severity of his actions, claiming that he was innocent. He attempted to rationalize his use of the dark web, suggesting a mix-up, saying he used it to prevent his girlfriend from discovering his online activities, such as seeing images of other women. When he asked what he was supposed to have done, the officer read a few of his charges, to which he replied, Sounds like the rap sheet from hell. Upon his arrest, the police discovered 484 illicit images on Falder's computer in his flat. Further investigation into his online activities revealed that his uploads to the Hurt to the Core site had earned him VIP status, a grim reward to the nature of his contributions. This led to Falder being charged with 188 offences, underlining the extensive and serious nature of his criminal conduct. It is believed that Falder had between 60 and 180 victims. NCA Senior Investigator Officer Matt Sutton said, In more than 30 years of law enforcement, I've never come across an offender whose sole motivation was to inflict such profound anguish and pain. Matthew Falder reveled in it. I've also never known such an extremely complex investigation with an offender who was technologically savvy and able to stay hidden in the darkest recesses of the dark web. This investigation represents a watershed moment. Will Kerr, NCA Director of Vulnerabilities, warned, Falder is not alone. There are many other users of some of these dark websites that we are very concerned about. Cambridge University, which said it was appalled at the crimes, was actively pursuing stripping him of his qualifications in a very rare move for the institution. Birmingham University said it was deeply shocked and distressed to hear of the offences. A Gumtree spokesman said it welcomed Falder's conviction, adding that it takes safety of its users extremely seriously. In court, a victim told that she was approached by Falder on Gumtree after advertising for nanny work to support her studies. Falder, under the guise of Liz, offered her money for nude photos. Once she complied, Liz in reality, Falder began to threaten her, claiming he had tracked her down on Facebook, knew her friends and her address. The victim was bombarded with daily messages from Falder from the moment she woke up until she went to bed, instilling a relentless sense of fear. She felt alienated from her family, believing they couldn't possibly understand the trauma she had endured. 
the humiliation of the images made it impossible for her to share her plight with them. She spoke of the unique torment of psychological manipulation. She said, I felt that no one would understand me because there was no one there holding a knife to me. The ordeal left her feeling isolated and impairing her relationships with her friends and family. She spoke of the difficulty maintaining close connections when trust is fundamentally shattered. At one point, she no longer wanted to go to school or be at home because she knew Fowler had her addresses. On October 16th, 2017, Fowler admitted to 137 charges involving 47 individuals. Will Care, an officer with the National Crime Agency, said that throughout his 28-year career, he had never come across an individual as dangerous as Falder. Phil McKay, a BBC journalist with 25 years of experience covering numerous trials, echoed this sentiment, stating he had never heard testimony as abhorrent as that presented at Falder's case. During the trial, which spanned three days, Falder remained emotionless. It took the court 35 minutes to read out the entirety of his crimes. On February 17, 2018, Judge Philip Barker handed down a sentence of 32 years imprisonment, with an additional six years on extended license upon release. The judge branded him an internet highwayman, adding, you wanted to assume total control over your victims. Your behavior was cunning, persistent, manipulative, and cruel. For the victims, he said, the damage is ongoing for these individuals. It will never end, knowing the abuse caused by you still exists in other unknown persons' computers. The judge also concluded Falder was a dangerous offender, adding, these sentencing remarks underplay your relentless, obsessive desire to continue committing offences. This case left a lasting impression on law enforcement and journalists alike due to the disturbing nature of the crimes. Despite a promising start in life, Fowler's descent into criminality was profound. His initial 32-year sentence was reduced to 25 after an appeal, a decision that caused a lot of controversy considering the nature of his crimes. This case shows the horrific potential for how the internet can be exploited for malevolent purposes and the enduring scars left on the victims of these heinous crimes. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay sane.